everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes, and today what we're going to discuss is how vitamin D omega-3s can affect brain function, specifically for people with ADD and ADHD and serotonin deficiencies. So if you watch any of our other ADD and ADHD videos, I always make a disclaimer that ADD does not mean that you have a dopamine problem. The dopamine as a neurotransmitter isn't always the reason why someone has ADD or ADHD. Sometimes it can be serotonin, it can be GABA, it can be one of the other million different types of neurotransmitters that we have, it be inflammatory based, it could be food based. So many other aspects play into ADD and ADHD, but today specifically what we're going to talk about is serotonin production and how vitamin D affects that as well as your omega-3s. So we're going to turn to this board. Now I know this board looks terrifying, but we're going to go over this in such great detail that you're going to become really comfortable with understanding how serotonin is made and what you can do this is simple, something as simple as making sure you have enough vitamin D and have enough fish oil or omega-3s so that you're producing enough serotonin and melatonin. So let's take a look at the board. Outside of what's called our blood-brain barrier, so we have this barrier around our brain that's supposed to protect us from bacteria, viruses, parasites, yeast, large proteins, and things that our brain won't won't be able to use to function the way it should. So outside of that blood-brain barrier, that protective mechanism, what we have is tryptophan. A lot of us are very familiar with tryptophan for, especially with Thanksgiving. You know, we eat a lot of turkey, we all say, oh, I'm so tired now because I had so much tryptophan. And you get, that's where we get tryptophan, is from our diet. So you get tryptophan from turkey, you can even get it from bananas and a lot of other food sources too. So this tryptophan will eventually become melatonin and also serotonin. However, if we have high amounts of stress and high amounts of inflammation, that tryptophan, tryptophan will not become melatonin and serotonin. So high stress and high inflammation prevent tryptophan from becoming that happy neurotransmitter or stopping us from being able to produce the hormone that lets us sleep. So that's one really big factor. You can actually get this guy measured through an organic acids urine analysis. Again, that was an organic acids urine analysis. It'll actually show you if your tryptophan is becoming this guy here or if it's becoming serotonin and melatonin and will tell you where in this pathway you're having trouble. It's an awesome test. I highly recommend it. So back to this guy. Tryptophan will eventually will cross the blood brain barrier and become 5-HTP, which eventually will become serotonin or melatonin. But we have some really important players first. You need adequate amounts of iron, which is why getting a CBC checked when you're having depression, when you're having anxiety and things of that sort is so important because you want to see if you have an iron need or a full-blown iron anemia. So we need iron in order to turn tryptophan into 5-HTP and serotonin or melatonin. We also need a really, really important enzyme. It's called THP2 and TPH1. Now, vitamin D turns these on. What I want to talk about, vitamin D is responsible for controlling and, and helping out over 900 of our genes. Not just the gene that makes TPH2 and TPH1, but over 900 of them. So if you're low on vitamin D, it's not just affecting your ability to make serotonin and melatonin, but over 900 of your other genes are also affected. And vitamin D is something so simple to supplement with. So I highly recommend, if you're suffering some, from any sort of behavioral disorder, you've got depression, anxiety, ADD, ADHD, OCD, ODD, anything in that alphabet soup, or you're just feeling under the weather, I highly recommend get your vitamin D checked and find out where you're at. A really common question is, well, how much vitamin D is, do I need? How much vitamin D is normal on blood work? When we measure it, what we like to see is a bare minimum of a 30. In my opinion, 30 is still too low, but the ranges on a vitamin D lab work is 30 to 100 is considered normal. Now, with knowing how important vitamin D is for us, I highly recommend being no lower than between a 50 and a 60, but if you have an autoimmune disease, I highly recommend being on that higher side. There we have a bunch of other videos that talk about vitamin D, autoimmunities, and thyroid, and things of that sort, but honestly, healthy individuals should be a minimum of a 50 on their vitamin D, and then you can figure out how much you should be supplementing with.
All right, so vitamin D turns on TPH2, TPH1. Now this is the, it's called the rate limiting enzyme, meaning if this enzyme is not, these enzymes are not working, you will not make serotonin and melatonin in adequate amounts in order to feel the relief of insomnia or feel the relief of depressive thoughts or, or in the frontal lobe not working very well. Because serotonin saturates our frontal cortex, which is called, called our executive function. All right, sorry, there was a lot of information that was really fast, but vitamin D turns on the rate limiting enzymes to make sure we are producing serotonin and melatonin, which is why vitamin D is so unbelievably important. All right, so we covered vitamin D. Let's talk about omega-3s. So your omega-3s, if you look on the back of your bottle, of an omega-3 bottle, you can see that uh, there's usually a ratio of EPAs and DHEA. These are essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids meaning we do not make them ourselves. We have to get this through diet. Where do we get these in our diet? We get them through, uh, through fish. We get them through flaxseed and things of that sort. You actually have a higher amount of omega-3s or a good ratio of omega-3 to omega-6s and things like grass-fed beef and stuff, things of that sort. We Omega-6s, while we need them, they're a lot more inflammatory. Omega-6s is where we we get from chicken, we get from beef, we get from steaks, we get from our, our, our meats that aren't fish-based. So the American lifestyle, we are re we love our omega sixes. We are really high in omega six. When we have that poor ratio of omega three to omega six, and high amounts of omega six, what that actually does, it's proven in the scientific literature to shut down those serotonin pathways. And we're going to talk about where that happens and why that is. So high amounts of omega sixes shut down that frontal lobe, that frontal cortex, and inhibit the production of serotonin. So we see high omega-6s in depression, in OCD, in ODD, in uh, ADD, ADHD, autism, and all of those things we see high amounts of omega-6 in the syrup. All right, so this bottom picture right here. Now, what we have, we've got our blood-brain barrier, we've got tryptophan, we've got that TPH2 that we've discussed already. We need adequate amounts of vitamin D for that enzyme to work appropriately. We make something called 5-HT. Now, this is a presynaptic neuron and then a postsynaptic neuron. What this means is when we start the production of something, what we will in order for serotonin to be made, it has to be, it has to go through all of this and then we get the end result is, is serotonin. Out in the blood, our hormones and everything are essentially useless. They actually have to bind and be pulled into the cells in order to be used. And that's kind of what this picture is showing right here. So we've got tryptophan becomes 5-HT. We and remember we need a lot of vitamin D for that. In order for us to release the 5-HT so it can be released and then bound to the next part, we need high amounts of EPA. So low EPA means less of this guy being released. Less of this guy being released means we don't make serotonin. Step three, DHA. So 5-HT is gonna cross this um, span right here and it's gonna bind to the postsynaptic neuron. But we need something for it to bind to, which is what's called a receptor. A receptor is out on a cell and then whatever um, its partner is will go through the blood and then bind to that receptor in order to be pulled into the cell to be used. So 5-HT's receptor is called 5-HTR, R for receptor. DHA makes sure that we have that 5-HTR present outside of the cell. It makes sure that it's got that thing to bind our 5-HT so then we can get the production of serotonin. So low DHA means these 5-HTR are not present on the on the uh, border of the cell in order to bind the, this product so we can make serotonin. So that sounds a little complicated, but overall what this is saying is we need vitamin D to make 5-HTP and 5-HT, and then this has to be released with the EPAs, and then it needs to bind with DHA, and then we end up with the production of serotonin. So as you can see, omega-3s and vitamin D are absolutely essential in the production of serotonin. And serotonin is related to the executive function of the frontal lobe, which where so many kids and adults with ADD and ADHD have a hard time with. So 
there's actually research that shows when a mother is low in her omega-3s, the child doesn't develop serotonin very well on their own. So we need to make sure that when we are going through pregnancy, we have high amounts of vitamin D and omega-3s, as well as making sure a child from a young age all the way through adulthood has adequate amounts of vitamin D and omega-3s to make sure brain is functioning the way it should. All right, guys, there's a lot of information in a very short amount of time. If you like this kind of information, I highly recommend you watch some of our other videos, as well as check out our blog at iBrainAndBody.com, where we go over this kind of stuff in more detail so that you can actually grasp the information and learn how to apply it to your everyday life. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.